Hey everyone, welcome to Vibrant Happy Women, the show, episode three. And today we're talking about how to love your family when it's hard. And this happens, this is life, right? We don't always like our spouse. We don't always like our kids. We love them, but we don't always like them. And so I wanna ask you a question to start out. And that is, when is it harder for you to love others? When is it harder for you to love your family? What's happening when that's your feeling inside? When is it hardest for you to love your family? You can specify by your spouse or according to your kids, whatever you wanna put down there. And while you're doing that, I'll tell you my little story, my most recent, and this happens as part of life. So um, last night was Halloween, as you know, and I had, let's see, one of our kids, I had our eight-year-old, and then I went to pick up our 10 and 12-year-olds who had been with their friends. It's really convenient because Lorelai and Silas are best friends with siblings. So it's so convenient when you want to go have a play date, you're like, hmm, send them all both over. And actually, that's interesting. Now that I think about it, from church, they have a pair of sibling best friends as well. What is it about them? I'm going to have to think about this. Anyway, I picked them all up and I'm tired. We've walked a lot. I take them home. My husband was already there with Cora, who was four. And he was happy to see us. And it was going to be a nice night. And what did I do? Bad. I walk in the kitchen and see it's a complete mess. And then I turn to my spouse and I'm like, oh, you've been here for about an hour and a half and you didn't think to clean anything. This is kind of the old gen that I fight to get rid of. She used to be way worse, but um, sometimes she comes back like last night. So what happens, right? Immediate defensiveness and I, uh, you know, he's defensive, then he gets a little louder and then I have to back off and apologize and make the decision to do it myself. But after all this is over, am I feeling very loving toward him and toward the kid? Uh, well, the kids, sure. Toward him, no. So, hi, Laura. How are you? <laughs> I, I didn't um, advertise this very far in advance, so here we are. So I don't see any other answers, but when is it hardest for you to love, Laura? I'm just going to share my points and um, see if it helps someone who's watching. So the first step in those moments when you really don't like your spouse or kids is gratitude. Gratitude is important because it shifts us into the feeling of alignment. Now, I talk a lot about alignment and intuition. Hi, Melissa, we are talking about the times when we don't love our families. And I'm encouraging you to share when those times are. What's happening when you're not exactly feeling like you like them very much? Yes, you love them, but you might not like them. Well, anyway, shifting into that place of gratitude is an easy way to get close to what that aligned feeling feels like. Light, positive, happy, kind of uplifted, um, not critical, not negative, not guilty. So when you wake up, I encourage you to exercise gratitude and think of things you love about your life just to get into that space. And of course, I tell you to do mountain moments and to fuel up with those good feelings. Well, in the moment when you're not feeling like you like someone in your family, you can do the same thing. It could spiral out of control as you might criticize, like I tried to do with my spouse. Oh, you didn't clean the kitchen. What the heck? I just talked to you about this. And um, typically, he does a great job. So I didn't, you know, things happen. And maybe he was just not in the best of moods and he chose not to do it. So to stop that spiral, stop everything and find five things to praise them for. So why five? Well, John Gottman did research and found that when we have a five to one positive to negative ratio, we are way more likely to be happy in our relationship. So then I had to think, okay, well, thanks for giving Cora a bath because she needed one. And thanks for getting her ready for bed. That's great. And thanks for taking her trick or treating. And you know, I had to really pull, but then you can see my husband's face softening into like, okay, she appreciates me, you know, instead of thinks like I'm, I suck. <laughs> so 
gratitude is so huge and this works really well with teenagers as well. So start in the morning with your gratitude, of course, to refuel and get into the vibe and the energy and the alignment you want for your day. And then that five to one ratio with your spouse and your kids, wake up and just start catching them being good. Oh wow, you unloaded the dishwasher, you're on your game. You combed your hair already, cool. Wow, and oh, is that fresh breath I smell? You already brushed your teeth too? Wow, you were so organized. What an amazing daughter I have. This constant perpetual praise and, and seeing the good and helping them form an identity of kind of doing the things that will help them in life and maybe point two is to help you as well. But positive reinforcement works and doing it at a five to one ratio is gonna make a difference. Finally, at the end of the day, when you go to bed, take a few moments to celebrate yourself and to show that gratitude for yourself. Think about, oh wow, I got the whole sink full of dishes washed and that mountain of laundry is gone, woohoo! Gratitude for what you've done and celebrate yourself. So those things help. Now, the next one is, it's important to know when you're feeling not so much in love with your family or that you don't really like them, is that the opposite of love is fear. Fear, did you ever know that? It's not hate, it's fear. So a lot of times when we don't like someone, if you went really far inside and took a look at your inner child, they, your inner child, let's say she, she's afraid of something. The opposite of love is fear. So. How do you figure out what that is? Well, in that moment last night, if I were to calm down and take a few deep breaths, I'm like, okay, he didn't clean anything. What am I afraid of? My inner child might have said, oh, I'm afraid of spending all my time cleaning all the time. Or I'm afraid I'm never gonna have any fun. Or I'm afraid I'm never gonna be able to relax. Um, maybe you're having an interaction with your mom. I know lots of people tend to have a little bit of conflict with their moms because we tend to be so close and it's hard to kind of have that detachment, but maybe she's saying something about your parenting style and you're upset, you're not in a state of love, but if you dig in deep, you might realize you're in a state of fear. You're afraid that you're never going to be good enough or you're afraid that you're not really truly loved and accepted. And these are deep fears. So every time you feel upset, take a moment and realize I'm not in a state of love that must mean I'm in a state of fear. What am I really afraid of? Close your eyes, inhale and ask your inner child, your, your little Jen, pretending you're like nurturing your little girl inside. What are you really afraid of? Have that conversation. So then also, after you've kind of had this conversation, start to inhale and exhale deeply and breathe some love into your heart area. Maybe you're imagining and circling that little afraid part of you with love and warmth. Put, put that afraid part of you in your heart area and just breathe in some love and let that fear melt away. And you'll remember, hey, you know, I'm okay and I love myself and I can feel that love right here so I don't need to be afraid. And that means I can accept when things aren't happening the way I want them to do too or the ways that maybe don't feel as secure to me or that aren't predictable. Okay, and then with that, you're feeling kind of this love here. Inhale it and then send it out mentally to your spouse and kids. Send them some of that love. And as you do so, pulling in those feelings of gratitude and love, and then imagining how much you love those other people, it kind of seems to grow. And this leads me to point three. The more you tap into love, the more you give others kind of that open-hearted permission to send love back. Okay, this is a little woo-woo, but when you tap into that sense of love and you interact with others with an open heart, they're gonna do the same back to you because energetically, mood is contagious. When you're in an open-hearted place of interaction, they're gonna feel that and then their hearts will open in response because mood is contagious just a little, they might not even know what's happening, but they'll soften. They'll send out more love to you and you'll start to realize love is like a flowing river of energy. It's abundant. You just have to open to it and not let fear close it down, but open 
send out that love and just interact with the intention to have greater and greater love between you and your spouse and your kids. They'll feel it and things will start to spiral upward, which is where we want them to go. Now I say spiral. It's not going to be a straight line up. We are human. But if you had a screw, I have, I think I have one here. Well, kind of a screw. Do you see the threads on the screw? They spiral. So there's down and ups, but slowly it's upward. We'll imagine our love and happiness in families is the same way. We will have some downs and then back up, but slowly the trajectory is more and more and more up. So it's really cool. So my parents are coming this weekend and I felt nervous. Um, I notice I'm walking around wanting the house clean and it might be why I got on my husband last night because let's let me sh walk you through how this works I'm feeling nervous I recognize fear is the opposite of love so I sit down in my rocking chair close my eyes and I'm like okay where's the fear in my body right here stomach maybe a little of the heart but stomach because kind of stomach is where we house the energy of needing to be able to control things or predict things so I feel that nervousness I'm like okay what am I afraid of what are you afraid of Maybe talk to yourself. What are you afraid of? Oh, I'm afraid my parents are going to come and disapprove of me. Okay. Why are you afraid of that? And then you go deeper. Huh. Well, maybe I'm afraid that they don't really love and accept me. And that's usually where it goes all the way down to for all of us. This fear of not being truly loved and accepted. But the cool thing is you can give it to yourself. You take that fear, shift it into your heart area surround it with that love open your heart breathing and then you allow that fear to start to dissolve you could maybe have a conversation you're going to be okay because you know what inner child i love and accept you i think you're amazing and you're feeling this love right now then the step three send that love out to others so i would send that out to my parents oh i'm going to interact with them in an open-hearted way and make my goal to share my energy of love with them. And I know that will open their hearts to send that same energy back. It's a flowing river. We just have to open the dams. So that's how I'm going to interact with my parents. I'm excited to remind myself to stay in that energy of love. So the three steps I talked about were first gratitude for all the amazing things people do. Keep it at that five to one ratio. Then remember the opposite of love is fear. I'm tapping in and finding out what you're truly afraid of. And then remembering point three, the more that you tap into that love and decide to open your heart to that energy of love, the more you're going to get that love back. And you'll start to recognize that you meet your own love needs and that love isn't something someone does to you. It's more an energy that you can draw from, maybe from God or a higher power, but an energy you can send out. And as you do, you're getting more back and it's circular. You're meeting your own needs here, but also as you send it out, it comes back to you. So I want to challenge you to try that. Just tap into that energy of love using gratitude and remembering when you're afraid to find out what it is and then send out that energy of love. So that is my show today. And I'm going to check out the comments now. Emma, thank you. It's a great topic. Yeah, for sure. Especially with politics, there are so many people in that energy of fear, fear of the people who are different, whether that's skin color or sexual orientation or even gender sometimes, fear of um, people who have less money or more money, fear of not being good enough. That's really what it comes down to. So when we tap into that energy of love, we feel good inside of ourselves. We can kind of alleviate our own fears right there through that place of meditation and breath and then grow that feeling of love simply by recognizing it, sending it out, imagining, sending that love to your loved ones. And then it kind of comes back to you. Make it your goal to interact in every instance in a way that you're sharing love. At the checkout lane, you can consciously think, ah, I love her. And it's weird, but you're not going to say it, of course. But there might be just some energetic exchange. Certainly it will help you. And it makes the world better. You can be a light that way.
All right. Well, I will be back next week, 1 p.m. Central. I am actually traveling next week. So if I'm late, watch for the replay. You never know how it works in an airport if I'll be on the plane at that exact moment. I am going to Santa Fe for a training, and I'm excited. Santa Fe will be warmer than Wisconsin, except it's a higher altitude, so I'm not sure about that. I'll find out. Well, it's been fun. Go try this out, and I'll see you next week. Take care.